Hi, my name is Rob Scott from UC Today, bringing you the latest news and conversation from the extended reality space. Today, I'm joined by Nick Cherakuri, who's the CEO of augmented and mixed reality smart glasses software company, Third Eye. Welcome, Nick. Thanks, Rob. Thanks for having me. Happy to be part of this. Hey, great to have you on, Nick. And uh, just before we get started, how about we do a quick intro? Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do at Third Eye. Sure. So Third Eye, we're an augmented and mixed reality company. Um, I, my background is I started the Penn AR VR club about five, six years ago, which was one of the first college clubs for AR VR. And since then, our team has been expanding and we're doing a lot of interesting stuff in AR for healthcare and field services and government. So it's, it's a pretty cool space to be in and we're pretty excited to be in this space. Yeah, it is a pretty cool space. And I've been looking at uh, Third Eye. Uh, I've been looking at your website and watching some videos. And it's really interesting what you're doing there. So, you know, first of all, tell us, uh, how, let's go back in time a little bit. How did the idea come about and, and what problem were you looking to kind of first solve? Sure. So AR, VR was always considered the future of where technology is going. Um, in five, ten years, people don't anticipate making phones anymore. They think these type of glasses, once they're miniaturized, will replace it. So about five, six years ago, when I was in uh, college, I started the Penn AR VR Club, and this was one of the first clubs that was kind of playing around with augmented mixed reality. We bought a few devices, made a, some apps, brought us some thought leaders, and we really grew into a club of like 200 people. So there's a lot of interest in this space, and we saw this as a really great time to get into AR VR. So after graduating, um, I started Third Eye, and we got um, a lot of uh, people who are interested in this space to join our company. And right now, our main office is in Princeton, New Jersey, but we have people almost worldwide helping uh, distribute our technology. Um, but we saw this as a really, really opportune time to get into augmented reality. Um, the technology was getting small enough where it could actually be worn for an extended period of, period of time. And right now we're trying to keep miniaturizing the technology and also building out our software. So we're doing a lot of cool stuff in healthcare, field services, military. Um, but I think uh, we just saw this as a really great time a few years ago to get into this space and kind of make it, develop a product that um, could be worn for an extended period of time and have all the features that are useful for AR and MR. Um, so I think it was just the right time, right place. And also I was fortunate enough to be surrounded by some really smart engineers. Um, and we have access to some really good labs and things like that, that enabled us to develop this technology. Fantastic. So uh, you mentioned military, field service and healthcare. Just talk us through the, the, t you know, the typical use cases there, if you can. Definitely. And I think this year, um, the entire world changed um, last year when COVID hit. And uh, healthcare was always a big focus for us from telehealth, um, vision impaired, surgical instructions. But with COVID hitting, um, and we had some relationships with first responders and local hospitals. We really wanted to see how, how we could use augmented reality to benefit first responder groups. So one application we developed, which is called our Respondi application, this has become pretty popular and it was featured, I think, in ABC News as well, where a first responder, for example, a nurse or an ambulance worker could wear the glasses and we developed a custom software where um, using our GPS location and the glasses, the nearest doctor on call who could be in a nearby hospital can see exactly what the first responder or nurse is seeing. So a see what I see feature in real time with things like uh, live annotations, um, it's HIPAA co compliant. So we're able to uh, load patient information into the glasses. So this is something that really enabled first responders to be hands-free and not need to carry around a manual or phone and something that they're uh, pretty happy to use right now. Another application for first responders we're developing, we developed is called our thermal application. So what this is, is you can attach like a FLIR thermal sensor onto the glasses. Our glasses are Android based and we developed some software that adjusts the thermal imaging on the, on the glasses. So a first responder could wear the glasses, scan a crowd of people, and basically read people's temperature in real time, hands-free, wow. so thermal imaging. So we're really trying to see how we could help first responders out during COVID, and these are two really popular applications that now we're actually expanding um, nationwide in the U.S. and hopefully worldwide soon. 
Um, and they're, they're proving to be really useful in helping first responders out. So I think from our company perspective, we're really uh, happy to be doing what we can to use AR to help um, during this current crisis. And uh, so far, we're seeing a pretty good response there. So healthcare, I think, is always going to be a really big market for us. Um, then field services. Um, by field services, we essentially mean any company with a distributed workforce, any company with a technician in the field, which is, I would say, roughly 80% of the world's companies have some type of workers um, or, or field workers. So uh, we have our glasses and our remote eye software, which is essentially an ARC, what I see, platform, plus things like live annotations, step-by-step um, -step instructions. So a worker could look at a, an engine, for example, a car technician could look at a car engine and the glasses would overlay instructions for how to fix the engine. So this is something where you don't need to fly out a senior te technician, um, but the glasses can really reduce um, the, uh, the expenses of a company plus improve worker safety and the ROI of a company. So I think field services is a natural fit for AR because it, it fits the needs of a distributed workforce. Um, likewise, for the military, right now we have the US Navy, Air Force, and Army all using our glasses. Um, for things like uh, maintenance, logistics, um, we have different naval bases using our glasses. Um, so for the similar kind of training purposes, um, our glasses are being used, as well as some classified software we're making. Um, and our glasses are ruggedized, so they can be used indoors and outdoors. They've been drop tested, so you can drop them for two meters on concrete. Um, and they're all in one, um, so they don't have a wired pack or anything, which is really useful for outdoor use. And it's about 500 nits brightness, so it can be used in pretty much sun sunlight as well. So we have some pretty good uh, like technical features in our glasses that enable it to be used in really ruggedized um, outdoor settings as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I would say those are our three big markets right now. Uh, we're definitely B2B focused. Um, maybe in a few years, we'll go to B2C once the glasses is reduced in size enough. But right now, we view the B2B market as uh, pretty tremendous. Uh, for the ROI, they're seeing for AR. And I think in all those markets, we're most proud to be in healthcare um, because we're really trying to help out first responders and hospitals out right now with everything that's going on. Yeah, that's that's really fantastic. You know, hats off to you there for for that effort. You know, I mean that's uh, that's really good. I mean, in terms of um, you know the, the the smart glasses themselves, is that a, a pair you've got around your neck there? Yes, this is a pair I got around my neck. Uh, so they're entirely hands free. Um, they're about ten ounces in size. Um, we have wow. cameras built in the front, so you have an RGB camera, flashlight, two uh, 3D sensor so you can create like a 3D map of the world and display holograms you can walk around in. So we have our uh, Slam software that enables developers to make any type of six off tracking or plane detection app. Um, but yeah, they're pretty lightweight for mixed reality glasses if compared to other hands-free mixed reality glasses. Um, and right now we're working on our next version which hopefully uh, will be half the size of this. Uh, but right now people are pretty comfortable with these like they're uh, only 10 ounces. Um, and they're pretty ruggedized as well, so they can be used indoors and outdoors and drop tested. So you can connect these to a hard hat, for example. You can connect any external accessories to the USB uh, port here. Um, we have speaker, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. It's like an Android 9 phone on your face, essentially. Um, and you can also connect to your 5G, 4G hotspot or phone for cellular access. Um, so it's, it's a pretty uh, standalone uh, piece of equipment that can be used for many apps. Um, so we have an app store in our glasses. So just like a Google Play Store, we developed our own app store and we have developers around the world making apps for our glasses in all types of industries, um, even things like gaming and entertainment, people are making apps on our glasses. So being Android based makes it pretty uh, easy to develop apps for the glasses. Yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, that was my next question in terms of how do you package this up? Because you seem to be, I mean, you're enabling frontline workers uh, or first line workers with superpowers really, aren't you? All that knowledge and you know, communication capability uh, and collaboration capabilities. It seems, um, you know, it's it, being nice and lightweight, it really, you know, fits the bill. So how do you package this up for organizations? How, how easy is it, for, is it for, you know, healthcare organizations and uh, uh, first, you know, organizations with first line workers to kind of deploy this kind of technology? Sure, that's a really good question. And that's one of our unique value propositions that Third Eye is we're not just the hardware smart glasses manufacturer. We also have very 
sophisticated AR software we developed in-house as well as accessories. So we're kind of an overall AR, MR, digital ecosystem. So this is something that a lot of our customers have really liked because out of the box, they can just turn on the glasses and they already have really powerful software they can use. They don't need to worry about third-party software integration. Um, but if they want to, they can always use third-party software. But definitely a lot of our end customers, um, for example, in healthcare, we have a Respondi software. So what we do is even before we ship it out, we um, have the software loaded up with their accounts loaded up. So when these uh, hospital workers, our first responders turn on the glasses, they're al already immediately into their app um, that they need to use. And then we have a support team that provides any technical support or goes on site if needed. And I, we would say like within a week or so, um, even end customers who've never used AR before get pretty, pretty familiarized with our glasses and are able to use it themselves. Um, so we made the UI very user intuitive. Um, so it's really um, easy to control with your audio commands or head, moving your head around. Um, so that's something we're happy to see is it's uh, the glasses are pretty easy to control. And um, we're seeing like within a week, people get up to speed um, with the glasses. Um, but definitely by offering the software out of the box with the glasses, that's a really valuable package for end customers um, because that reduces a lot of work on their side. And uh, we are also, our pricing is, right now we're offering our software for free. So during this COVID crisis for all healthcare workers, like our software is coming for free for the, with the glasses and similarly our other software as well. Um, so we're trying to do our best to uh, make it as easy of a deployment as possible for AR. Yeah, what a, what a great application of the technology. So, I mean, just looking forward in, into the future, what's uh, what's coming up in 2021 for Third Eye? Anything you can tell me? Definitely. Um, so right now in 2021, we're looking to really expand our deployments from from the healthcare side for what we're doing for first responders, as well as um, for uh, our other use cases, like for our field technician software, um, really trying to uh, expand these nationwide and worldwide, I think. A lot of companies are seeing the value proposition of AR really increase during COVID because everyone is distributed right now. No one's able to really travel and technology like AR, it's kind of like a Zoom on steroids because you have the same video conferencing capabilities. You have the live one-on-one -on -one video call capabilities, but you also have the AR instructional overlay capabilities for training uh, technicians or providing remote assistance. So I think a lot more companies are realizing that AR is an essential uh, part of their future technology roadmap, and that's enabling us to reach out to these companies easier. And also, um, we're going to keep adding to our software. So, right, the next software we're going to make is probably going to be a, a drone software where you can control a drone via the glasses. So, with your hand movement, you can control the drone. So, that's that's a pretty popular use case we're getting requests for. So, we're going to continue building our software for different industries, and also our hardware. We're going to be coming out with our next version, which will be uh, much uh, light, lightweight um, and probably connect to a 5G phone. So on the hardware and software side, we're going to be, be having a lot of updates. We're making it really uh, customer oriented, uh, but we're pretty excited where we're going. So far, the customer response has been really good and we want to continue our focus in healthcare and trying to make a difference for uh, first responders, especially. Sounds like you, you're very busy right now. You've got lots and lots happening. Um, What's the best way for organizations that are interested in and know more about Third Eye technology? And what's the best way to, for them to get in touch? Definitely. So anyone can go to our website, www.thirdeyegen.com. Um, our team is happy to provide a live demo. So just reach out on social media or on our website, contact us page. And if you're interested in using AR, our team can provide you a live demo anytime. Also, our team is expanding as well. So if you're interested in AR and want to be a part of a really a uh, motivated team um, just feel free to reach out and we're happy to see how you can uh, be a fit uh, but I think we're we're uh, definitely growing and we're seeing some really strong use cases for AR at the moment so if anyone's interested in AR just feel free to reach out and we're happy to see uh, how we can fit in as well. Oh, fantastic opportunity so hey Nick it's been super speaking to you today thank you so much for joining me. Thank you Rob thank you for your time. And that's it from us. If you've enjoyed today's session, please subscribe to XR Today News and give this video a quick share on social. It's always appreciated. And if you're an XR fan and want to be part of the conversation, you can join us using the XR News hashtag 
on LinkedIn, Twitter and Facebook. Our social links are in the description. I'm Rob Scott from XR Today. Thanks for watching.